joining me at none other than Frimley Pits. I waited seven years to get a ticket on here. This year I've got the winter ticket. I started fishing in November. Things have gone pretty well. I knew from the off I needed to make headway because it was only going to get colder and more difficult as the winter went on. So you can come down to me swim and I'll talk you through the tackle and tactics I've been using to catch some of the fish so far. So I got here at first light this morning. At Frimley there's a set of train tracks and the crossing only opens up on the hour. So I have to leave my home in Essex about quarter to five to get here for seven o'clock. I normally get here 10 minutes early, which gets me through at the first opening of the gates. I walked around, it was still pitch black when I got here and uh, didn't see a thing, which hasn't been unusual. Most mornings I'm here early and I normally do one or two laps of the lake just to see if I can spot a few fish. And it's been a rare occasion on the 13 nights so far that I've actually seen a fish. The fish I am seeing generally are about one or two in the morning. So I've been setting an alarm on my phone, getting up, sitting up from one to two, seeing if I can hear a few fish. We're now into late January and any lake can be hard, even a runs water in January. And I'm fishing, you know, there's a good stock of fish in here. I'd say there's easily 120 fish and among them are some absolutely massive carp. And talking of the carp, the stock, I think it goes back, it's about 45 to 47 years old and um, it's getting on now. So um, I feel lucky, quite privileged to have got on when I have. I've had to wait seven years, but I believe I've got to Frimley in its prime. The fish have never been as big as they are. So why did I pick this swim? This swim is known as First Noddies. It offers a lot of cover. It's got a small island in front of it. Then it's got a lot of old dying lily beds that sit on top of a bar and the carp definitely seem to favour this area during the colder months. Most of the fish that have been out, there hasn't been one out for a couple of weeks, I think, have been out in this area. My first session down, which would have been early November, I did okay in the open water, but since then, the carp don't seem to have visited them areas as much. And I've been doing well fishing against snags, old lily beds and things like that. The first session down, I did manage to catch one of the better fish, a 39 pound, 10 ounce common. Absolutely beautiful carp. I think they call it the pink belly. I'm not sure, don't know the names of all the fish on here. Really lovely carp. And I also managed a 31 pound mirror and a couple of 20s. So I was off to a bit of a flyer, but I knew that things would only get harder, especially coming into that period after Christmas Around Christmas, I was lucky enough to land my first 40 pounder from the venue, a fish that was 40 pounds and ounces. And that session as well, I managed another two carp. So things have been going really well. But my last few sessions, as you can expect in January, it's been really hard going. But I just keep going, train in the background there. I'm just gonna keep going. The ticket runs out at the end of February and fingers crossed, I will get a summer ticket and you can catch up with me throughout the time on Frimley as my tackle and my tactics change and we look at different ways of catching the carp. So this session, I've got my favourable winter tactics. I love using the cell in the winter. It's a good bait all year round, but in the winter, I think it stands head and shoulders above the rest. I like to crumb that up and that makes it even more digestible than normal. I add a slight bit of pellet to it and a few handfuls of maggots just to give it that live bait effect. That's what's been doing me the bites. The hook baits, they've changed. I've had a few fish on Ronnie rigs and I've had a few fish on wafters and bottom baits. So the bait really hasn't played a major part in it, if I'm honest. I think the fish I've been catching have come because I've put a bait they like in the area and it's crushed and digestible, which is always good in the winter. So the swim I'm in, known as First Noddies, it offers a lot of cover. It's got the old dying lily beds in it, a small island with a snag hanging off the side of it, a typical area that I think the carp would love to hang about in the winter. It has done a few fish about a couple of weeks ago, so I know they've been in here in the cold. And the only thing I had to go on in the dark this morning, some ripples came out from the old lily bed. No birds showed so I can only assume it was a carp. 
So I've got one, my right hand rod just off the tip of the island and between the dying lily beds. So it's a natural path for the carp to take when on a patrol route. The other one is on the other end of them lilies and that's on rock hard gravel there in about nine foot of water. And then the last rod is right amongst a load of lilies on the left hand side. So all them rods are in a lot of cover and I've topped them with two to three spoms. I've not gone mad and that's just crumb with a handful of maggots in. And it was only the other day I was fishing another lake and do you know when you cast out and that spom doesn't open, it's so annoying. So I broke the spom in the bucket, washed it in the water and just the bits and pieces that were left on the wash from that spom were still there the next morning and it covered the area of about a bin lid which makes me think this time of year when they're not eating a lot two or three spoms is just right in my opinion for getting a bite. check that out this is probably my go-to mix for the winter and it is crushed cell the spod and pva pellet with a mix of maggots in there and just that one spoon dropped in 10 foot of water would cover a massive area probably the area the size of four bin lids and a little pop-up sat amongst them or a little wafter will be the perfect presentation and it's enough food to keep fish that ain't overly interested in feeding at this time of year, interested but not overfed. So it's a fine balance. I've recently dropped down to only three spoms per rod. I was going to six, I've pulled it back now. The water is freezing cold. It's just above freezing outside today. So I don't want to overfeed the fish whose metabolism at this time of year is almost shut down. They're burning their body fats and they're just picking on small items of food and you don't want to overdo it. So just think three spoms over a rod is absolutely perfect. And one of the reasons I've cut down, I was recently speaking to a carp angler that fishes a lot of matches and he was telling me a friend of his was spotting over to a far tree line and he was watching the maggots flutter down through some gin clear water. After just three spoms of red maggots, it had covered an area about six foot wide and he said there was so much bait there and it was only three spoms. You're going to limit your chances of getting a bite because they've got to pick through the bait before they get to your hook bait unless you're very lucky. So that's another reason I've pulled back cold temperatures, a lower metabolism in the carp and just don't overdo it. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to balance one of my hook baits and I want to be matching the hatch. So basically, I'm going to be using a hook bait straight out of here, a cell, and I'm going to drill it out. And the important thing about when you're drilling baits out is to not force the issue. Let the drill do its work. So you literally just gently spin it. Don't push it. If you start forcing it, you'll split the bait. No matter what the bait is, you'll split it. So it's just gently coax the inner out, let the drill do its thing. <laughs> Check it every now and then so you can see how deep you're going in. And you'll drill this out and the idea behind this is you're going to be fishing exactly the same hook bait as your free offerings, <laughs> but your hook bait is going to be a lot lighter. So when the fish sucks it up, it's going to fly back putting that hook a lot deeper into the mouth and that is definitely going to give you a better chance of hooking the fish. Now a good little tip, put the cork onto your baiting needle first so you ain't forcing it in, straight through the centre of the bait and then just simply thread the cork in. You can see that sat nice and flush on the needle and it's ready to go. And it's a bit trial and error with the size of the cork. I like to use about probably seven or eight mil of cork. And I find that that balances it absolutely perfect. So you've got the cork there. And what I like to do, I'm matching the hatch on the bottom. I want to match the hatch on the color of the boily stop to the cork as well. So it's very subtle. 
and it sits just on top like that. So the hook's gonna sit flat on the bottom and that's gonna come down very gently. And there's a reason I've been using this approach on Frimley, particularly around late November, December time, there was absolutely stacks of leaves on the bottom. And one of the spots I was getting quite a few bites from, it must have been about five or six inches deep in leaves. So what I wanted was my lead hitting the bottom first and then a very slow sinking bait coming down to settle gently on top of them leaves and not to be dragged in. And that's why on occasion, if the leaves were really deep, I'd go for like a helicopter lead set up, move the top bead up about six inches, fish a little Ronnie rig. Again, I always make sure that I've took the putty off so the pop-up will come down nice and slowly and rest without pulling the hooks into the leaves or I'd be drilling the bait out, making it a wafter and it would come down very gently. And that is really what led to my success in that swim. And it was one of the evenings in December, freezing cold evening, and um, I had one of the Ridge Monkey cameramen down with me. The wind was blowing into my swim and the guy questioned my sanity. He said, are you mad setting up in this swim? It's freezing cold. And I was fishing along a snaggy bush line that was absolutely covered in leaves on the bottom, but the carp were loving it in there. About five o'clock that evening, the left hand rod's gone and I've picked up the rod and I knew straight away it was a better fish. There was no head knocking. It was just really holding down heavy. And the bigger fish near don't seem to fight too hard. So as it come along and a nice big common popped up in the beam of my head torch, I was really pleased. And it ended up scraping 40 pounds, 40 pounds and a few ounces and a lovely winter carp. And that is the tactics that caught me it. And quickly, if you'd like to see how to tie this rig, then just go to my last video. It's the blowback rig with a shrink tube over the eye and the shank of the hook, exactly the same. I've just adapted it to take this wafter instead of a bottom bait or anything. It's a very versatile rig for your hook baits. You can put any hook bait onto it. It's just in this particular instance, I wanted the cork on the top so I could settle nice and softly down on them leaves without getting pulled into them. Well, it was a quiet night and um, confirmed that there was nothing in the swim through the night. A coot come out this morning and I could actually see it coming up with bits of crumb and maggot. So the bait is still sat there. I don't really know what I could have done differently in this swim, maybe a zig, but there's far too many snags to be fishing them kind of tactics. So I fished as well as I could really. I've uh, blanked back the last four nights on here now, but that is January fishing. January is bloody hard, even on a runs water, let alone a big fish water. And talking of big fish waters, I'm not here for a couple of weeks now because I'm still targeting a common nearer to home. So if I only get a night a week, I tend to fish nearer to home. If I've got a couple of nights, I'll come down to Frimley because it's, you know, 100 miles from my house. But um, you're going to be joining me in April. By then, I hopefully have had a few more fish and there'll be a lot of change going on. Not most of all, that Joe behind the camera will be a married man, so he might be less hair than me. We'll see what happens. 